Rock on and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to use NextAuth to lock up a Next.js application with the app router. So as usual, I'm very excited to get started, to get my hands dirty in code. So let's get started. All right, let's start this tutorial. I'm going to use my pretty famous, I think, React course for this one. No, probably not famous, but anyways, uh, I've done a few iterations of this one and it's actually based on the course that I had many, many years ago in React and I've done a few iterations on this one. So right now I've refactored this one to use the app folder with Next.js. So this is the application that we're going to use and we're going to make this little sucker to be protected by Next auth because right now we don't have anything here that protects this application. And you can see you can search for different movies here and stuff like that and you can go inside of the movies and read more about them. So this is the application. I provided this one in the code for you. Very important to go to the movie database.org and get yourself an API key for this one to work. I won't provide you with that one. You have to register and get that key. It's free to use, so you can do that yourself. And that key is gonna be put in an env variable uh, in this application, API underscore key. So this one, I've obviously blurred this one out for you because I don't want to show my own key, so that's why. Uh, so get your own key, otherwise you won't get this tutorial to work and place it inside this n variable that's called API underscore key. Let's start off with um, NextAuth. They're actually renaming NextAuth also. I think it's just going to be called AuthJS. But for now, this is the NextAuthJS documentation. Uh, and we're going to see here how to get started. So the first thing we're going to do is to actually install the library in NextAuth. So I'm going to break this one here, probably move it up here and make it a little bit larger so you can see it. I'm going to clear the console. And then we run npm i and what's it called? Next auth, I think. Yeah. So I'm inside the project that I provided for you with my move application and I install this library next auth. So this is everything that we need to install for this one. And we are going to use GitHub uh, because if you look here, they have a lot of providers here for you to use. So it's very easy to use GitHub for this one. So we have to register that application in GitHub also. So go to GitHub account and inside settings, you have something that's called developer settings and OAuth apps. So click on OAuth apps. Oh, that's very hard for me to say, OAuth apps. And then new OAuth app, application name, React RMDB uh, Auth Tutorial, probably something. And the homepage for this one is gonna be localhost, port 3000. Uh, we don't need a description, but the callback URL, that we're going to use is localhost 3000 forward slash API forward slash auth forward slash callback forward slash GitHub. So this is the callback URL that are built in next auth because they've built in support for GitHub. So you have to have this as a callback URL, otherwise this won't work. So make sure to type that one in and register application. And then we get a client ID and we also need to generate the client secret. So click on that button. So we have the secret here. But first we can copy the client ID, go inside of the code and inside the .env.local file, it's called github underscore ID. And we paste in that one. Then we're gonna have the github underscore secret. So go back to github. We copy the secret, paste it in. So next auth also need a secret, otherwise it won't work. So next auth underscore secret and any secret can go here. So you can choose whatever you want here. But this is everything we need um, for this one to work. And of course, I will revoke this one when this tutorial is over. So don't be tempted to try my IDs and stuff here because it won't work. I will delete it after this one is done. So you have to create your own. 
All right, so that is everything we need for this one to work. And the next step we need to do for get this to work is to create a provider for NextAuth so that we can have access to all the functionality in NextAuth throughout our application. And if we look in my application here, you can see that I have a page, a layout. And in the layout file, I have something that's called a provider wrapper, and that is this component here. And we're in the app folder now, so we need to specify if we're on the client component. And as I'm using uh, React Query for this one, I need to have my provider in the client component. So it's inside of this provider wrapper that we're going to import the session provider from next dash auth and from React. But we need a session also because this session provider is on the client and we don't have a session here. So how do we get the session? Because we need to provide the session to the session provider. So this one is gonna go here, session provider. Then we're gonna have the other thing inside of that one. So this one needs a session. We have a prop that's called session like that. But we don't have any session here. So how do we do that? Well, we can go inside our server component, inside of our layout, because that one is a server component. And up here, we import something. Import get server session from next auth. And the great thing with the server component is that you can do something in the server component, get some data or something, and you can provide it with a prop down to the client component. So we can create a new prop on this provider wrapper. We have the session. And up here in our component, we're going to create the session. We await, this is an async function, get server session. But then we also need to specify this one as an async function, like that. So we have a session here now, and we provide it down to the client component, like so. And now it complains because we haven't actually created this prop. So go back to the provider wrapper. We're gonna add in that prop. We have the session and it can be a session or it can also be null. And we have to import this session also. So import session from next auth. And I usually structure my stuff like this. So I mark it. So if I have types, I like to mark it like that. So import session from next auth. And as it's a type, you can be more explicit if you want. So import type session, then you know it's a type. So we provide this one with a session, but we also have to, to structure out that prop here. Like so. And now we're good to go. We have the session but we don't actually have any login method or any OAuth provider. So luckily we created that GitHub provider for us. So we have to implement that one also. So inside the app folder, we create a new folder that's called API. Then we create another folder that's called auth and another folder inside these square brackets. We have three dots, next auth, like that. And the three dots will make sure that it capture every route down the tree here from this next auth one. Right inside this folder, we create a new file that's called route.ts. And it's inside here, we create the logic for next auth. So first we import next auth. Then we're going to import the GitHub provider from next dash auth providers and github like so so it's built in it's very convenient actually because you don't have to do much stuff here as you're going to see to get this up and running so export const auth options we create the options now for the github auth so for this one we create this auth, auth options uh, object and we have the providers then we have an array, then we use that GitHub provider that we imported. We invoke it with an object. 
we have the client ID. So from process.env.github ID, that is the one that we created in the env file earlier. And if we don't have anything, we can just return an empty string. Then we have the client secret. And we're going to grab that from process.env.github underscore secret. And we do the same stuff here. If we don't have anything, we return just an empty string. All right, so that is the options for, uh, for next auth and the GitHub provider. Then we need to export a const that's called handler. And we run next auth and provide it with the auth options like that. And then Next.js and the app router want an export of a handler as a get and also handler as a post, not as a get, as get. And this is everything we need to do to implement the GitHub authentication with next auth. So pretty easy, pretty fast implementation. So let's start it this and see if it works. NPR run dev. We go back to the application. And of course we can't see anything here now because yeah, we're not doing anything with the auth. But we can go to go to the route API auth sign-in. And you can see that we have our sign-in here. So we click here. And I'm going to authorize myself. And then we are actually authorized, but we can't see it now because, yeah, we're logged in, but we can't really see it. So we're going to create here up in the header. I'm going to create a login button and a logout button. And you're also going to see the name of the login person. I'm not going to style this now. It's going to look like crap, to be honest, because uh, I'm just going to put it here in the header. But it's going to work. So it's good enough for you to learn something from um, the styling you can do yourself. And also we want to make sure to protect the routes. And in this case, I'm going to do it easy. I'm going to protect all the routes for this one. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So if we go back to the layout, first we're going to import redirect from next navigation. And then we simply check if we have or if we don't have a session, we redirect the user to the forward slash API auth forward slash sign in. So that is everything you need to do here to actually protect this application, protect all the routes, because we're in the root layout. So the first thing it's going to check if it's another session, then we redirect the user. And we can try if this works. Now we are actually logged in, and um, I think we can just. Go to the sign out link. Yes, and we are sure we want to sign out. And then we go to the home page, and you can see that we're being redirected instantly to the login with GitHub. So that's great. It is working. So that is how you protect this application, the complete application, all the routes. If you want to do it on each route, you also have a hook that is called use session that you can import in each route you want to protect and do the check there if you don't want to um, lock up all the routes as I did now. And if it works as it did with the old version of uh, the page router in Next.js, you can actually create a file that's called middleware and do the check there. You can lock up all the routes or you can exclude routes. I'm not going to do that here, but you can check that up in the documentation probably. So. Uh, that will probably work in this version also. I haven't tried it out actually because it's so easy to just lock it up in the layout like I did now. But all right, let's go to the header component. So inside the components folder and the header, we are going to do some stuff inside of here. And this one is actually going to be a client component now. So we mark it as used client because we're going to import use session sign in and sign out from next auth forward slash react like that. 
And we go inside our component. I'm now making an implicit return. I have to change this one to make it an explicit return. Something like that. And up here, we are going to get the session. Const session equal use session. So that is why we created that the client provider before, because now we have access to this session. By using the use session hook, we can access the session like this. We can console log it out to see if we have something. So go back to the application. Yeah, we need to sign in again. Go to the console and you can see I have a lot of stuff here now because I haven't updated this completely yet. But you can see that we have the session here and it says that we are authenticated. So that's great. All right. So now we need to create a login button and a logout button. And we also need to see what user that's logged in. So I think we're going to do it somewhere maybe below here. So we have a React fragment. I create a P tag with a class name. And I'm using Tailwind for this one. So I'll set the text to white. Signed in as, and we can get the name from session.data.user.name. And actually, I think it's going to complain now. So we also have to check here if we have a session. So color bracket, session data. Then we have a question mark. We put this one inside of that one. So this little piece of code here inside of this parenthesis is going to be when the user is logged in. And it's complaining because the user can be empty. All right. So make a little question mark there also. Then we're going to have a button with a class name of text white on this one, that one also. I'm just doing quick stuff here now. We have an on-click handler on this one. And we invoke the sign in function that we imported up here. So these are built in in next auth, sign in and sign out. So not sign in because we logged in. So sign out for this one. And then we can copy this one. No, actually, first we're going to say sign out. Then we copy this button, paste it in here, colon and parenthesis, and paste it in. So we have another button that's going to say sign in, like that. And then we call the sign in function, like so. So we created a button for logging in and one button for logging out. You can use the same button and just make the check here which function to invoke. But sometimes you need to have different buttons, for example, for a login and for a logout. So, and this one was an easy way to do it. So that's why I did that. Uh, and also we're displaying the username of the logged in user. So go back to the application. You can see that, as I said, it looks like crap now. But you can see we signed in as Thomas Webenfalk or Thomas Webenfalk, as it's in Swedish. And uh, we can click sign out. And then we instantly redirected to this sign in screen because we're not signed in. So sign in. And we signed in. No, when I locked everything up, we can't really sign in here. So if I go back to the application and inside app folder and layout, I can just comment this uh, redirect out here. Just reload the page. Sign out, and you can see that it says sign in. And then you click sign in, and we sign in with GitHub. And that is working. So pretty easy. I love this next auth, actually, because it saves a lot of work for you. And uh, hopefully you learned something in this one. And uh, see you in another one.